Right, this one is for question number 16 on module 7 homework. Right. A personnel director in a particular state claims that the mean annual income is greater in one of the state's counties, county A, than it is in another county, county B. That could happen, right? Um, in county A, um, like, you know, I'm thinking like Fairfax County versus Frederick County or um, Stafford County, then, you know, annual income could be different. Um, in County A, a random sample of 14 residents, that's a small sample size. So because we have such small sample size, they better tell us that the populations are normally distributed later, right? Because this number is not greater than or equal to 30. All right, let me keep on reading. So uh, County A, a random sample of 14 residents, has a mean annual income of $42,000 and a standard deviation of $89,000, I'm sorry, $8,900. In County B, a random sample of 13 residents, and they better be random, well, they did say random, so we're going to try to assume that they represent everybody else in that county has a mean annual income of $37,600 and a standard deviation of $5,200. By just the look of these numbers, I can see people in County A make more money, okay? All right, so, but then the thing is, is the difference um, statistically significant to say that what this uh, personnel director is saying is true, okay? At alpha level 0.05, Answer parts A through E. Assume the population variances are not equal. Now, I want you to pay attention to this sentence right here. This is telling us two things, okay? First of all, population variances are not equal. So when you will do um, uh, the procedure, you will, you will have to not pull variances. When population variances are equal, you will have to pull them, pull the variances, but... Um, if they're not equal, you do not pull variances, okay? What else? Now, this is like what they're telling us. They're saying Sue and Momin are different in age, okay? But uh, they're not telling us anything about the actual values, right? Um, if I just say Sue and Momin are different age, I don't really know how old is each of them, right? Just like over here, I got no idea what the population variances are. So I really don't know what the population standard deviations are. So what does that mean? Because we are working with unknown population standard deviation, you will have to do t-stat, okay? So this little sentence right there that's highlighted is telling us two very important information, okay? You read in section 8 point, oh, I can't remember which section this is. Let me take a look. Um, section 8.2 about when to pull and when to not pull variances. So that part right there, we were going to just not pull variances because population variances are not equal. And it says, if convenient, use technology to solve the problem. Yes, I will. All right, let's identify the claim and state H, H naught and HA. So what was this personnel director's claim? Now look at the word here. It's greater than, okay? The symbol for greater than Okay, the symbol for greater than is just this, right? So what they are saying is mu1 is greater than mu2. And if you look at this symbol, it does not contain an equal sign. It's not an equal sign. It's not a greater than or equal sign. So what they are saying has to be an alternative hypothesis. The claim being made is that the mean annual... All right, I better read this uh, very carefully. Claim that the mean annual income is greater than in one of the counties. So the mean annual income in county A is greater than um, in county B. That was what was being claimed here, right? All right. And we were talking about how that, you know, what they just said is an alternative. Is that a timer? Yes. All right. Give me one second. Just Add one sec. Noah. I'm going to have to work, okay? All right, I'm going to pause recording for just one second. So the alternative is that a mu1 is greater than mu2. That's what they were saying. They were saying county A's people make more money than county B's people. Um, If that is the alternative, the null has to be the complement of that. 
What is the opposite of greater than? It's less than or equal to, okay? It's not just less than, but it has to be less than or equal to. To be a null hypothesis, you have to have an equal piece, okay? So that's how you can identify the, um, the, not, the H naught and H A. Now, which hypothesis is the claim? The personnel director was claiming um, that the mean in the county A is greater than the mean um, income in county B. So what the, the claim was the alternative hypothesis. So when we successfully reject the null hypothesis, we're going to be able to say that we have enough evidence to support the personnel director's claim. Okay. All right, let's find critical values and, um, and identify the rejection reason. I like the p-value method better. I really do. But this one, they want us to find the critical value that separates, now what was the alpha level? 0 0.05, okay? So what we want is 0 0.05 to the right, to which tail is it? We have to watch this very carefully. Take a look. The alternative is mu1 is greater than mu2. If the alternative has greater than symbol, we are doing a right tail test. Okay, we're doing a right tail test. So the critical value will be that one point um, that separates 5% um, to the right and 95% to the left. So I'm going to find that number by opening up a stack crunch. And you can find this number using that big table too, but it says use technology to solve the problem, so I'm going to do that. Now the question is, am I opening up a normal calculator or a T-calculator, right? And that really depends on if we know population standard deviation. Now remember we just talked about how population variances are not equal. But, you know, they never gave us what population standard deviations were or population variances were. They're related, right? You just have to take square root of that number to get the other. Um, we don't know population standard deviation. That's why you will have to do T distribution, okay? T distribution. So I want you to open up T calculator, stat calculator, and T. What you want is you want this curve um, to have 5% of the data, 5% uh, of the area to the right of this critical value. So take a look at what I'm doing. I'm going to change the symbol to greater than or equal to, and I'll tell them that I want 5% or 0 0.05, and that is the alpha level, right? I want that much to the right of it. Now we have to come up with the degrees of freedom though, okay? All right, now degrees of freedom, when the sample sizes are different, is um, smaller sample size minus 1, okay? The first sample size was 14. The second sample size was 13. Guys, I'm going over a lot of information very, very quickly. I'm assuming that you read this chapter already, section already. So when I'm kind of just briefly mentioning these very important key facts, this should be a review. So um, if what I'm going over is overwhelming right now, then I need you to go back and read section 8.2 one more time, okay? All right, so which one's smaller, 14 and 13? 13 is smaller, so degrees of freedom must be 13 minus 1, so degrees of freedom is 12. When I hit the compute, what it's going to do is it's going to hide this right tail in red, and that is 5% of the area. To the left, there is 95% of the area, and the critical value is 1.782. I'm going to copy that and type it in here. And that's how you can find the critical value. So um, if, the Z, uh, if the test statistics comes out to be in this red area, it's in the rejection region, okay? Then that's when we have to say, oh, we reject null hypothesis. So the rejection region is anything greater than that critical value, 1.75. So uh, select the correct rejection region. Um, um, okay. If T is greater than that critical value, we're going to have to reject, okay? So let's find the standardized test statistic for this particular problem. And I'll go ahead and just use, not the T calculator, but I will do T stat now, okay? And you know why we are using T stat, right? Because you do not have population standard deviation. We have two sample, don't we? And we have summary of, you know, what they collected. I'm going to click on with summary, and then I'll type in everything in. The sample mean from county A was 42,000. 
the sample standard deviation is 8900. Uh, but you know, some people may say, hey, I thought we don't have standard deviation. No, no, no. This is sample standard deviation. This is not the same as population standard deviation. Okay. Sample size was 14. Sample mean for sample 2 was 37,600. And standard deviation was 25200. And sample size was 13. Okay. Now, be very careful. This part right here, they said, assume the population variances are not equal. So do not pull variances. If they say population variances are equal, you must click on pull variance. But not this time, not this time, because they are not equal. We're going to not pull variances. Okay. Now let me go ahead and just do the do the test. What were we assuming? What were some hypotheses? Um, the alternative hypothesis was that mu1 was greater than mu2. So if you do mu1 minus mu2, a big number minus small number, the difference must be zero. Uh, must be greater than zero okay uh, we don't really get to change the symbol here but if we just type uh, mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero for the alternative uh, stack crunch will do the right one tail test okay so don't worry too much about not being able to change that equal sign if we use this greater than symbol they're going to automatically uh, get the right null hypothesis okay now take a look that's all you gotta do click on compute and they're going to give you that standardized test statistic right there 1.582 if i round that 1.582 and you have to compare this number to that critical value oh look that number is smaller than the critical value so you know we're not successful and you know if you look at the p-value here that's a six percent six percent is greater than five percent alpha level so, um, so unfortunately, we have to say we failed to reject. This test was not successful. Um, decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. You have to compare this standardized test statistic to this critical value. Because 1.582 is smaller than 1.782, you must say that you failed to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? at the 5% significant level. I mean, when you fail to reject, we don't have evidence, okay? We don't have, we, there is not enough evidence to support the personnel director's claim. So what was that difference about? It could have been just sampling error or it could just happen by chance. Whatever it is, it is not statistically significant. So this problem used the rejection region method. There were a lot of points to talk about here. Definitely a loaded question. But um, if any of the parts that I talked about in this video was confusing, I want you to definitely go back to section 8.2 and read the chapter, uh, the section carefully, okay? So I think that's enough for today. Um, if I can come back and do a couple more videos another day, I will try to do that, okay?